morning sun shines on the gleaming hide of a muscular ranch horse. The aroma of bacon and coffee drifts from the wood cook stove at a cow camp. Silver spurs jingle as the men and women of the West get set for another day in the saddle. From the heart of Canada's finest ranching country, this is the Spirit of the West with rancher and horse trainer Hugh McLennan and his collection of music, poetry, and conversations with the folks who live and work with horses and cattle in the Spirit of the West. Well, we all know the month of March can be kind of volatile. Now, in my memory, it's always been that way. For more years than we can recall, our cows would start calving about the first week in March, and I'd start bringing colts in to train around the same time. Now, I do remember some days being comfortable with sunshine and a warm breeze and a promise of spring, and I remember days of the same ones, but in different years, being frigid, stormy, and snowing hard. Is all of this a result of human-caused climate change? Well, even the so-called experts disagree on that, but it's a high-profile subject in the media. And today, you'll hear the wise words of a scientist who's dedicated his life to the study of climate. And he's a longtime supporter of agriculture. And he'll also comment today on how much awareness the new generation of urbanites have about ranchers and farmers. It's not that they don't care about you, they don't even know you're out here. And so there's all these disconnects from the city. That's Dr. Tim Ball, and agree with him or not, I'm sure you'll find his words fascinating. Now, what is the definition of a real cowboy? Well, Baxter Black weighs in on that one today. Now, there are a lot of people who can ride a horse better than a regular cow hand, and a lot who can outrope him, and others who are more qualified to replace a prolapse. But there's not many who can do it all and by themselves. And the Rangeland News looks at a broad range of subjects this week. Last month, USDA was projecting steer prices this year to be above 2019, but not anymore. And when Gary says uh, 2019, I'm sure he means the year, not the dollar value. On the Urban Saddles and Western Wear, horse training file will compare the outstanding working cow horses from the performance world to the working ranch horses of today. And you'll hear from the renowned climatologist Dr. Tim Ball after Bran Hill comments on the way. I'm just a fair weather cowboy. Top hand when it's sunny, warm, and clear. I'll be the wooliest, wildest buckaroo. But only when summertime is here. Oh, near when that big old sky's bright and blue. I am the man you should employ But I'll be gone when that autumn wind blows through Cause I'm just a fair weather cowboy My old hoss is cow horse born and bred He likes dragging calves and roping steel He'll sort them gather in beautiful weather and then turn out to pasture for nine months of the year As long as it ain't dusty, dry and hot, not too hot Riding him is a fundamental joy Give you everything we got if it ain't raining Cause I'm just a fair weather cow Fresh out of Percocet, 
I'm just a fair weather cowboy. band kind of reminds me of the late night jam sessions after the evening shows at the Kamloops Cowboy Festival. Well, Dr. Timothy Ball is a renowned environmental consultant and former climatology professor at the University of Winnipeg, and he's also chief science advisor of the International Climate Science Coalition, policy advisor to the Heartland Institute with a doctorate in climatology from the University of London, Queen Mary College. He's in his early 80s now and is in semi-retirement. We've been together at various functions over the years, and I thought you'd enjoy hearing what he had to say uh, when we had the chance to visit at a Canadian Cattlemen's Association meeting a while back. Dr. Ball, first time I listened to you had to be probably 12 years ago or more here in Kamloops, and I've got to say you're looking trimmer and slimmer and more youthful even than you did then. Well, thank you, and, and I noticed the scars have healed from that last talk, but uh, no, I'd, I'd lost about 50 pounds, and I'm, as I say, I'm not half the man she married, <laughs> but um, it's better for my health, and I'm yeah, feeling really good. That's good. Uh, is there some formula, some program that might work for the rest of us? And uh, well, it's just known as not eating, <laughs> reducing, and and um, and of course, uh, one of the best uh, high energy uh, uh, foods is beef, and uh, and people forget that. And you know the old thing about there's less uh, fat and calories in a steak than there is in a, S a Caesar salad. For sure. So uh, yeah, uh, well, but good. it's just basically uh, a little less of everything. Uh, yeah. It looks good on you for well, sure. Yeah, thank you. All the hot button issues that uh, the mainstream media jumps on today, climate change. I mean, what's happening with climate change? Well, climate change is changing like it always has. And uh, as somebody once said, the unusual weather is more unusual than usual. And, um, of course, that's the great myth, is that somehow what's going on now is different or outside of the, the normal or the long-term pattern. And it isn't. And, uh, you know, I've never said global warming hasn't occurred. It has occurred. The issue isn't that. The issue is what's the cause. And the, um, the extremists, and unfortunately our government, have bought into the argument that it's CO2 from human activity, and simply not the case at all. There's no evidence for that whatsoever. So what I keep trying to do is drag people back to the science, what we really know. What are the facts? And uh, let's stop wasting our money on these uh, programs and getting people frightened. Um, it's not the way to run a country. Difficulty. A concern in the cattle industry and one uh, issue that uh, many of us had a collective uh, guilt complex over was, of course, methane gas. And uh, we began to soul search and say, gosh, are we really contributing to a problem that's going to shorten the life of this planet by the methane that uh, calves are exerting? On their cows? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. And, and that, that's a perfect example of this kind of harem scarum nonsense. Uh, methane, of course, is a naturally occurring gas in the atmosphere. It's a very, very small percentage of the greenhouse gases. It's about 0.0009%. Um, but the argument was that human the cattle's uh, producing the methane. Um, the, first of all, the basic science, uh, when you look at cattle have increased, but buffalo have decreased. But they only put the cattle into the formula. They don't put the decrease of buffalo into the formula. And um, they, they don't exactly equal each other, but pretty close. Uh, the atmospheric level of methane has, has decreased over the last 11 years with no government policy or uh, draconian measures. That hasn't made headlines on CNN. It, it doesn't get in the media at all. And, um, and so, uh, of course, the other thing that uh, what's illustrating with, what illustrative with methane is how political this is, because the largest production of methane by human activity is rice paddies in Asia. And, of course, they've been increasing their rice production and so on. Uh, but you can't point the finger at third world or developing countries. That's politically incorrect. And, and then uh, the other thing is, of course, that they point the finger at the Canadian or North American cattlemen 
but they don't point the finger at the 250 million cows that wander around India, and those cows aren't producing any foodstuffs to keep people healthy and, and, and wise. So, um, you know, there's a huge political bias to this whole game. That you won't want to miss Dr. Ball's comments on climate change and agriculture when the spirit of the West continues right after this. How about a weekend pass to the 24th Annual Kamloops Cowboy Festival, March 19th to 22nd, 2020. Another outstanding lineup of the finest pure Western entertainers anywhere. Canadian legend Gary Vilgar. Searching for freedom, westward the wagons, they settled in the valleys of sagebrush and pine. Tom Cole. In a big prairie moon. Rides a big prairie sky. The first Kamloops appearance for Doug Figs. A good horse under me, it's easy to see. I'm right here where I want to be. A pasture full of great cowboy poets, the BC Cowboy Hall of Fame inductions, dinner shows, daytime entertainment, and a spectacular art and gear show workshop. The best place to get all the information, bccchs.com. To order tickets, call 1-888-763-2221. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Well, maybe this old cowboy's view of our world today is better kept to himself, and I'm sure Billy would go along with that, but I just can't help noticing the polarization of views over a lot of issues, from economics to politics and climate change, and uh, what bothers me a bit is the amount of emotion that finds its way into the discussions. Now, Dr. Tim Ball and I talked a bit about that. You know, there's a huge political bias to this whole game that goes on. Well, it comes down to a message that I hear and I try to share fairly often sometimes, too, is that every once in a while uh, we seem to take ourselves a little too seriously, especially in the media or in public life or in politics or that kind of thing. And I I love the the story Baxter Black told. I can't remember all the details, but uh, it was a cow that was suffering from bloat and it was dark at night and they couldn't see exactly where to put the troll car. So one guy got a cigarette lighter out there just as the other guy opened up the cow and they did find out the methane was flammable. Yes, that's that's right. Yeah, don't don't look for the solution. It might kill you. Yeah, it's um, it, it, exactly, and and um, that's the that's the issue. I mean, I, when I appeared before the Standing Committee on Ozone issue years ago, I got up there and said, you know, the Earth's slowing down in its speed of rotation, the magnetic field's weakening, and when the magnetic field disappears, as it will at the present rate in 120 years, in the past there's been massive extinction of pl- animals on the planet, and I want to know what my government's doing about this. Well, and as a scientist, I can play that harem scarum game forever. The other side of that is there's been thousands of doomsayers in the history of the world. Not one of them has been right, because if one of them had been right, we wouldn't be here today. And so what we need to do is is stop this environmental hysteria and uh, playing on people's fears and emotions and uh, just calm down and, and help our politicians to make calm, rational, better decisions. What bothers me sometimes is I know that we see uh, very young, impressionable minds, even starting in elementary school and through middle school. And uh, that's uh, millions of dollars have been spent on publications pushing that line, but it's based on such short-term data. Oh, exactly. And, and uh, of course, um, I've been involved with agriculture in the classroom for since it, it was founded. In fact, I gave the keynote speech in, in 1982 in Saskatoon. Well, we need, we got the same problem with, with uh, science in the classroom. You know, what's actually being taught and what science really knows. And what you see is the science that's being taught is more political science than it is real science. And it, it, to me, it's, it's a great concern. And just as I worked hard to get ag in the classroom off the ground, and we're working now to get science in the classroom off the ground. And, and part of the reason for that, of course, is that uh, teachers tend to have their own political biases that can go into the classroom. And uh, that's, not what you, you, that's not what the classroom's for. You know, it's like it's like these singers that get up there and, and get a platform to sing and then start telling us about how to live our lives. Well, my answer is shut up and sing. I didn't give you to the platform. <laughs> exactly. You're entitled to yeah. your opinion, yeah. but don't use what I've given you as a privilege yeah. and exploit that privilege. Well, there will be more with Dr. Ball after a song that talks about the way the climate was for those cowboys of old. Here's Donnie Poindexter. Well, they rode for the brand and about two bits a day. Living their dreams, making their own way. 
But the winter of 87 brought deep snow and bitter cold. Their lives changed forever, those cowboys of old. But you can't break their spirit and you can't take their pride. They'll still be cowboys on the day that they die. Those cowboys of old. Well, the blizzard, it raged on, northern plains saw no sun. The spring fall would reveal all the damage it had done. The cattle, they drifted and died from the cold. They called it the big die of the cowboys of old. But you can't break their spirit and you can't take their pride. They'll still be cowboys on the day that they die. Those cowboys of old. The big outfits they busted, all that's left was their lord. The foreigners that vested and boarded up their door. The cowboys they wandered right and chuck line took its toll. Some chose long rope and running iron, those cowboys of old. But you can't break their spirit And you can't take their pride They'll still be cowboys on the day that they die Those cowboys of old But you can't break their spirit and you can't take their pride They'll still be cowboys on the day that they die Those cowboys of old Those cowboys of old Those cowboys of old Well, you know, a lot of social media and mainstream news programs seem to focus on predictions. Actually, the Rangeland News will be doing that in a little while. But most of the time, it seems to me there's not much accountability when a lot of these dire predictions don't come true. And Dr. Tim Ball talked about that. Well, in the year 2000, they had they asked 200 famous Americans from all walks of life to predict for the year 2050. And I've argued that the only one that's going to be right is, is Dennis Miller, the comedian, who predicted that in the year 2050, there will be a lot of 70-year-old women with silly tattoos on their bodies. Yeah. And if you'd have asked people in 1933 to predict the next 70 years, I mean, there's nobody on the planet would have even come close. I mean, a few of the things somebody might have hit on purely by chance, but that's that's the problem. Uh, and and of course, you know, when you, when you look at what what's happened, all of these things that have totally changed the planet and changed the way we live. Well, who's going to predict those things for even the next ten years? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can speculate on some of it, but so that's why a prediction is a really a fool's game. I also like the speculation on the future that uh, definitely people are living longer. I can just see that uh, we're more physically fit and uh, probably people our age and that much older are still doing more physical activity than our uh, parents and our grandparents ever did. But in the future, I think one great uh, job opportunity might be people driving minivans around all over the place, picking up these aging joggers that can't remember where they live. <laughs> well, that's right. But Chris, or did I, that one come yeah. from you too? No, 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 no. The, 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 um, my comment about living longer is I'm not interested if it means not knowing who I am and wetting my pants. Right. I'm really not interested. We're talking about quality of life, of course. And I also jokingly say we're living longer, but the parts still were out at the same time. Yes. So hopefully they catch up. But no, I mean, it, it, when you look at, at the enormous successes we've had in quality of life and longer life and everybody in the world, in every country, is living longer than they were 20 years ago. And most of that, by the way, isn't due to medicine. Most of it's due to better nutrition and clean water. It's Which eventually comes back to agriculture. Too. Oh, exactly. It's as basic as that. Um, and if you're talking about skin cancer from uh, the ozone scare, well, skin cancer is increased because people are living long enough to manifest it. 
Most skin cancers are contracted between the ages of 3 and 16 as your skin is forming. If you get a lot of burns in that period of time, you increase your risk of getting skin cancer after 60 significantly. And of course, now we see more people living past 60. And I know when I started teaching a seniors class 20 years ago, 65 was a senior. Now that's middle age. That's yeah. how dramatically it's changed. And uh, I think that's right. 80 is the new 60, and, uh, well, for us, 9 o'clock is the new midnight. Anyway, coming up, Baxter Black has an insightful look into what it takes to be a real cowboy when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Howdy, friends. This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan, and I'll be right back after this with a little peek at the definition of a cowboy. Your land is a legacy, a challenge from those who tended it before you to build on their foundations. At Corteva AgriScience, we understand what it means to be the stewards of a legacy. We embrace the challenge of building on the foundation of Dow AgroSciences to maintain your trust, to bring new solutions, to help you care for your land. See how we can help build your legacy at rangeandpasture.com. And for our Canadian listeners, just check Corteva.ca, the Canadian website. I've often been asked the question, usually by Gentiles, urban people, what is my definition of a cowboy? And I'm not sure what they expect my answer to be. Maybe someone who's strong, forthright, and brave, or maybe a professional rodeo hand or a movie star idol like John Wayne. Well, my definition of a cowboy is someone who can replace a uterine prolapse in a range cow in a three-section pasture with nothing but a horse and a rope. Now, there are a lot of people who can ride a horse better than a regular cow hand, and a lot who can outrope him, and others who are more qualified to replace a prolapse. But there's not many who can do it all and by themselves. The first thing that defines a cowboy is that he is there on the scene. Now, range cows are good-sized creatures and a long way from the vet clinic, which means that if she's in trouble, the lone cowboy is often the difference between life and death for her, whether she's stuck in a bog, mauled by a mountain lion, afflicted with pneumonia or screw worms, or prolapsed. So to help her, first she has to be restrained. Now, even though they're domesticated animals, they are not tame. They're like Kmart employees. You can't actually walk up to one. So the cowboy must be able to approach her a horseback to capture her and then hold her so he can work on this ailment. The first part of this definition involves quite a bit. Say you rope her. Well, what do you do then? There's no corrals, no squeeze chute, no cowboy assistant, tranquilizer gun, winch, or net. So you neck her to a tree, or you trip her and then sideline her, or you cross tire with a pig and string. Now, part two is putting in the prolapse. Well, this is no small procedure, even in the antiseptic surroundings of a veterinary clinic. It's still like stuffing a smoked ham down a sink drain, and it's no easier on the banks of a cottonwood creek or on the shale hillside of a winter permit. But whether it's a prolapse, a wire cut around the foot, or sick calf, whether it's in the Paladura Canyon, the Tonto Basin, or the Alvor Desert, it's still cowboy, horse, and rope, the basic essentials. Some folks seem disappointed when they compare the abilities of trick ropers, bronc riders, horse trainers, and vets to the skills of the working-for-wages cowboy, how he's not as accomplished as they are. I remind these folks that he's not a professional cowboy, he just does it for a living. This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan. Brought to you by Corteva AgriScience. Come on down to the Integrity Speckle Park sale at Dryland Cattle Trading Corporation in Veteran, Alberta. This sale will have 30 high-quality bulls as well as top-the-line purebred and commercial replacement heifers. This great offering is brought to you by Wolf Lake Speckle Park. Mubin's Watts and McAleer Ranching. The Integrity Speckle Park Sale will be held on March 27th at 3.30 p.m. Come beforehand to check out the cattle and stay after the sale for beef on a bun and fellowship. An envelope with a CD inside it and a nice handwritten letter arrived in the mail recently and it was from Caroline Park, an Alberta ranch wife. It's her first CD and her letter mentioned a song written by the guy Gene Autry called the world's finest singing cowboy, Eddie Dean. Carolyn says uh, she heard the song on an album her dad gave her and the song is I've Sold My Saddle for an Old Guitar. And here's Carolyn's version. I spent my life in the saddle I've earned a cowboy's pay In the brisk rimmed heat 
Getting weary feet till the blue skies turn to gray. The dust has caked on my cattle. Gone are the birds of yore. I sold my saddle for an old guitar. I'll ride the range no more. Gone are the days when the buffalo grazed. Gone is the old frontier. There's nothing left but a cowboy song of all that I hold so dear. So I've said goodbye to my pinto, and I've locked the old ranch house door. I've sold my saddle for an old guitar. I'll ride the range no more. Buffalo graze, gone is the old frontier. There's nothing left but a cowboy song of all that I hold so dear. So I've said goodbye to my pinto, and I've locked the old ranch house door. I've sold my saddle for an old guitar. How about a weekend pass to the 24th Annual Kamloops Cowboy Festival, March 19th to 22nd, 2020. Another outstanding lineup of the finest pure Western entertainers anywhere. Canadian legend Gary Vilgar. Searching for freedom, westward the wagons, they settled in the valleys of sagebrush and pine. Tom Cole. In a big prairie moon. Rides a big prairie sky. The first Kamloops appearance for Doug Figs. A good horse under me, it's easy to see. I'm right here where I want to be. A pasture full of great cowboy poets, the BC Cowboy Hall of Fame inductions, dinner shows, daytime entertainment, and a spectacular art and gear show workshop. The best place to get all the information, bccchs.com. To order tickets, call 1-888-763-2221. The Rangeland News from the Spirit of the West. A roundup of issues and events from the world of agriculture. At the top of page one, it says a lot of our friends and neighbors are working out costs and prices, making buying decisions either to stock their pastures and range with yearling steers, bred heifers, or cow-calf pears, and it would be nice to have some indication as to where prices will be this fall. Predictions again. But the analysts keep changing them. Here's Gary Crawford. Economists tell us that in the beef market... We're seeing an intertemporal shift. Yes, I understand that perfectly. Yep. Uh, uh, that's USDA Acting Outlook Board Chairman Mark Jekinowski. And uh, what about this interpersonal uh, temporary uh, uh, rift? Uh, Intertemporal thi- shift. Yeah, that thing. What exactly does that mean? Higher production in the first half of the year, but we expect that to reverse in the second half of the year. Production will slow down, but still on net you know, a modest increase in beef production. Last month, USDA was projecting steer prices this year to be above 2019, but not anymore. Analysts have chopped half a dollar off their previous projections, three cents below last year's average price. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington. On July the 30th, well-known Fur Mountain, Saskatchewan area rancher and Saskatchewan Stock Growers Association past president Miles Anderson was injured in a serious motor vehicle accident south of Moose Jaw. Miles sustained significant injuries to his lower body and he's facing a long road to recovery. 
In response to those reaching out to help, the Saskatchewan Stock Growers Association organized a fundraiser, and I heard that uh, things went real well. Uh, it was held last weekend. And if you would like to help, uh, there probably still is a way you can do that. Just see skstockgrowers.com. Next regular cattle sale at the Williams Lake Stockyards of the BC Livestock Co-op is March the 19th, and a regular sale at the Vanderhoof Yards is on March 20th. Next sale in the Kamloops Yards is March 24th. You can get all the information. See the sale streaming live at bclivestock.bc.ca. Meanwhile, at the Innisfail Auction Market, regular cattle sales every Wednesday. Next horse sale is March 21st, and another pre-sort feeder sale is March 23rd. Get all the inf information there at InnisfailAuctionMarket.com and call Danny Mark or Dwayne at 1-800-710-3166. Our Wandering Western Spirit Band is going to wander up to Fort St. John, B.C. for Concert 83. My little brother Jim and his amazing guitar picking along with super bass player Uncle Mike Daggert and we will be joining Tom Cole and friends at the Lido in Fort St. John May 22nd and May 23rd at 7 o'clock. A show each evening. Tickets for the show available at thelido.ca. That's T-H-E-L-I-D-O dot C-A. Or you can call them at 1-250-785-3011. And I guess we're down to the final item. And over the years, this old cowboy has learned a few things. I'll share a few of them with you right here. I've learned, for example, that, well, artificial intelligence is no match for natural stupidity. And I've learned that we are responsible for what we do, unless we're celebrities or politicians. I've learned that age is a high price to pay for maturity. And I've also learned that one good turn gets you most of the covers. <laughs> and that's the Rangeland News. Coming up in the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training File, a comparison between the performance horse and the working ranch horse. And more from Dr. Tim Ball when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Coming up on the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training File, a look at working cow horses both in the performance arena and out on the ranches. And there's more from Dr. Tim Ball, but first we'd like you to hear this. Billy and I have spent some time reflecting on the wonderful times we've had after hosting over 1,200 people who love the Western way of life on 19 Spirit of the West cruises after 120-some flights, over 90 hotel room visits, and through our challenges, including Billy's with radiation treatments and my journey with end-stage kidney disease, doing dialysis from Mexico to Alaska, that it's probably time for us to take a step back from cruise hosting after the next one. Ah, oh, we have so many vivid memories and video of our members of our group ziplining in Mexico, having many memorable trail rides from Prince Edward Island to Mazatlan, walking down Broadway in New York City with the locals all wanting pictures of our cowboy hats, touring and visiting ranchers and farmers from Jamaica to Ireland, seeing the hidden treasures of Australia and New Zealand, the wonders of the Panama Canal and so much more, and our unforgettable sing-along sessions with the Spirit of the West Choir. And we sure want to thank each and every one of you who joined us over the last 20 years. By booking with the Spirit of the West, you've helped us keep this program going all these years. Our farewell cruise called The Spirit of the West Brings It Home is coming up. We wanted to eliminate some of the hassles of long distance travel and make it an unforgettable experience. So we'll gather you all up here at our ranch on July the 15th for a lunch and a concert with the Western Spirit Band and a special guest. From there, we go to the fabulous Sun Peaks Resort for a barbecue and sightseeing. The next morning, we all go down to the coast and we'll board the Holland America beautiful ship Conningsdam for a seven day cruise up the inside passage and back. No flying required. This package includes the amazing White Pass Rail Tour and so much more. Now this one is filling pretty fast, so if you'd like to join us, just call the number 1-800-530-0131 to reserve your spot. Deposits are refundable up until April the 3rd. 
Now it's time for the horse training file, brought to you by Irvine Tack and Western Wear, Canada's largest Western store. 873 874 874 what? Boots! Irvin Tack and Western Wear says they have over 1,000 boots in stock. Well, of course, they're Canada's largest Western store with over 100,000 square feet of selection. Western Wear with a welcome twist and so many boots. Uh, what number were you at again? 800 and... oh no. <laughs> How about trying them on instead of counting them? Great idea! Find your perfect fit at Irvin's. Exit 305 of Highway 2 by Crossfield. Canada's largest largest western store and a lot of folks uh, really enjoy shopping online there at urbansaddles.ca well i've been reading some interesting discussions on in a few forums about working cow horses who do most of their work in the arena and are really quick to lock in on a cow now several of these riders however talked about having a problem getting the horse to settle down and travel with focus when they're out of the arena and on the trail now, the consensus seemed to be that because they're bred to be quick, alert, athletic, and cowy, they tend to look for and focus on every movement in the bush instead of just walking along with purpose and watching where they're going. Well, I guess that points out a difference between cow horses bred and used for arena work and the real-world working ranch horses who are bred for many of the same things. Now, the working ranch horses do have to travel a lot of miles from one range unit to another, a lot of it at a trot and a walk and with focus. Now, I think part of it comes from the intuitive skill of the men and women who do real ranch work in getting the horse into the active sweet spot, as Jonathan Field calls it, the comfort zone where they really find that rhythmic way of traveling. But it's important for them to be alert, of course, about what's going on around them, for sure, and I don't know how many times I've been hunting for cattle, following tracks for hours through the bush, and I know they're around here somewhere. And it's my horse who's told me when we're closing in on them. Now, if Lucky hadn't have looked into that meadow to the left of the trail, pointed her ears, and told me they're in there, I'd have ridden right by them. Riding with focus is important, of course, and the ranch cowboys have ridden enough unpredictable, sometimes bronchy horses that they're always focused on where they're going, and even though they might be looking around or visiting with another rider, because they are riding every step, they're not likely to get shaken loose if their horse spooks at a grouse flying up under his nose or something similar. And for Irvin Saddles and Western Wear, that's the horse training file. And, you know, I sure get a kick out of watching Lucky the Wonder Horse, my 35-year-old buckskin mare, who has shared so many adventures with me over the years, when she knows it's time for her Hoffman's Senior Ration. And uh, I'm just thinking that uh, the way she looks now, we might be able to showcase her to you folks who will be coming up to our pre-cruise concert here at the ranch in July, because I know Lucky would enjoy it. Come and see the largest selection of whale broke horses in Western Canada at the 7th Annual Top Gun Horse Sale. <laughs> April 11th, high noon, at the Cal Nash Event Center, Panoka, Alberta. You can preview the horses Friday, April 10th at 4 p.m. They start coming through the ring Saturday, April 11th at high noon. Over 200 horses expect. Horses for ranch work, team roping, penning, roping, trail riding, barrels, mounted shooting, and kids' horses. Every type of horse you might be looking for, including loads of true ranch horses. Every horse will be ridden, driven, or led into the ring. Rain or shine, everything's inside. For information and to see the horses, go to TopGunHorseSales.com or call Jordan Dogs, 403-783-0246. I know there have been a lot of high-quality horses go through that sale, and a lot of folks very, very pleased with what they found. Well, a renowned climatologist, Dr. Tim Ball, is featured today, and in trying to find a few Western songs about the weather, this one popped up from Ian Tyson, Springtime in Alberta. Should have seen it in your eyes I could never read your eyes So lost in love was I They'd always take me by a surprise You were dreaming of the Southland Ah, your love comes and goes It's just like the weather, babe Only heaven reads 
Just like springtime in Alberta Warm sunny days in the skies of blue Then without a warning Another winter storm comes raging through And the mercury Storm clouds coming Lord, they're dark across the sky The same look that I've seen so many times When I've looked into your eyes So I'll turn up my old collar Pull my hat way down down to near zero Just like springtime in Alberta Warm sunny days endless skies are blue Then without a warning Another winter storm comes raging through And the mercury Ian Tyson will be at the Kamloops Cowboy Festival next week to receive a special award. And now, it's back to climatologist Dr. Tim Ball. Well, this is just great, Dr. Ball, and I know that you also touched us. We'll wrap up here with, uh, and I always wonder, sometimes we live uh, in a rural area, cattle raising area, and our neighbors are in the same lifestyle as we are. When I go to Vancouver or Los Angeles or someplace, I realize that... uh, I really don't know what the concerns are of the urban population necessarily. And what do you find about urban awareness generally about agriculture? And how much clout do we producers have? Well, you have very little clout. That's the problem. Your victims are your own success. That now only 2% of the Canadian population are listed as farmers producing enough food for the other 98%. And the more people live in the cities, the more they become removed from the uh, food production process. Um, And of course, as only 2% of the voting population, as opposed to say, for example, 54% of Torontonians not even born in Canada, it's not that they don't care about you, they don't even know you're out here. And so there's all these disconnects from the city. The same thing's happening in China. They're abandoning the farms and the food production to move in. And, And interestingly enough, You know, we heard about the starvation in Niger. The crops, in most places, the crops are fine. The people have gone into the cities because they can get handouts from the uh, agencies that are giving out free food. You know, when you think about it, so I can stay in the field and sweat and struggle and produce a crop, or I can go into the city and get the food for nothing and spend what I earn on on booze. Oh, yeah, let me figure this out, you know. And and but again, it's 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 getting the things all wrong. But the urban the urban dwellers um, increasingly removed. And if you think back even 30 years ago, most people in the cities either had come from the farm or still had people on a farm. It's not true anymore. And at even 30 years ago, most of the city or the um, city newspapers had a separate section on agriculture. Even in Regina, that's not true anymore. So you, you see this continual disconnect And um, I think that um, somehow through the political process and the education process, 
we've got to reconnect the urban people with the, the food. And as you saw that little quote that I've made up, that I put up, that said there are no farms in the cities, but there are no cities without farms. And maybe could you just close with a question that I know a classroom, someone in a class asked you one time, because uh, it does uh, relate to what your what your scientific discipline is. Well, yeah, I'm a climatologist, and I was talking to a class who were studying the fur trade, and of course the climate of the fur trade was much different and cold, and the teacher introduced me as a climatologist, and immediately a little hand went up at the back, and I said, you got a question? He said, yeah, how many mountains have you climbed anyway? Which, of course, gets right to the, the, th the crux of the issue. In them. Fascinating study and fascinating talk with you. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Paul. you. Thank you, Hugh. And anytime you want to call me in, we can do a radio phone in or whatever you want. I'll be very happy to help out, help the farmers any way I can. Next, it's our classic Song of the West. And this week, one that has not been heard for quite a while. And then the weather is the subject of the Cowboy Poetry Spotlight when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. How about a weekend pass to the 24th Annual Kamloops Cowboy Festival, March 19th to 22nd, 2020. Another outstanding lineup of the finest pure Western entertainers anywhere. Canadian legend Gary Velgar. Searching for freedom, westward the wagons, they settled in the valleys of sagebrush and pine. Tom Cole. In a big prairie moon. Rides a big prairie sky. The first Kamloops appearance for Doug Figs. A good horse under me, it's easy to see. I'm right here where I want to be. A pasture full of great cowboy poets, the BC Cowboy Hall of Fame inductions, dinner shows, daytime entertainment, and a spectacular art and gear show workshop. The best place to get all the information, bccchs.com. To order tickets, call 1-888-763-2221. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. For this week's classic song, I picked one out that was written by Aim Moorhart. He was a photographer, illustrator, and painter, writer, musician, singer, dancer, and entertainer, prospector, skydiver, teacher, and a coach in California. And uh, another California artist and singer, Bob Wagner, recorded this seldom-heard song that Moorhart wrote. And for you folks planning on being at our big pre-cruise concert here at the ranch in July, don't get the idea we've got a big fancy place. It might be more like the one in the song. My ranch is one lone cow, a well gone dry and broken plow. My ranch is one lone cow and a thousand acres of nothing. One hundred miles of fence, the feed's no good but the view's immense. One million tons of sand and a thousand acres of nothing. I'll face the sun and won't see my shadow, ride my old horse with a busted saddle. I've got my range and the blazing sun, and hurting my cow just has to be done. My old cow just had a cat, now I got me a cow and a hat. My herd has room to roam on this thousand acres of nothing. Just didn't agree with me Said they wouldn't lend me no cash On my thousand acres of nothing And I'll tell you something else I had to be a real garden too The trouble was tumbleweed was the only crop it grew Heck, even the dang jackrabbits detoured round My thousand acres of nothing I'll breathe the dawn and when I awaken My old stove smoking, my breakfast bacon Tomorrow's troubles are years away And there's a million stars at the close of day My cow's got a wistful face Staring across at my neighbor's place But I'll be a cowboy yet On my thousand acres of nothing Oh, sure, it's true, all right. There ain't much out there. 
But when I sit on my porch of a warm summer evening and watch a big yellow moon rising over that beautiful Nevada desert country with a lonesome wail of a coyote yipping way off in the distance, I know I'm home and that's where I'm going to stay. I may only have a cow and a half, but I'm going to be a cowboy yet out here on my thousand acres and nothing. That guy is so talented, Robert Wagner. Well, we can't wind this one up without a poem about the weather. And it's a good one from Red Stegall. Some of the most beautiful mornings I've ever spent in my life are out at the Four Sixes Ranch at Guthrie, Texas with my friend J.J. Gibson during the spring roundup. Went out there one fall and we are setting up on top of a hill and looking out over that country and watching the jackrabbits and the deer and the antelope just getting up. And that night when I got back to headquarters, I started the, the seed for this poem called The Weather, and I finished it up a couple of days later. There's something about a cool October morning that suits my disposition just right. Skies as clear as a crystal today, and as the sun slowly creeps into sight, my old pony step is a little bit lighter. Must be the crisp autumn air. Cold weather's coming, no doubt about that. He's Rode a half inch along her. I just saw some geese heading south for the winter. Boy, that's a beautiful sight. And something inside of me stirs at the sound of Canadian honkers in flight. Pronghorn has started to gather in bunches. That's a sign winter's well on her way. Mesquite trees have put on a good crop of beans. Be a toughen, the old timers say. Boys and I cleared 80 acres of pasture. We laid in about 10 cord of wood. You know, burning mesquite is a cowboy's perfume. Makes that musty old cabin smell good. And in the evening, the missus will stoke up the fire. And when it snows and the drifts get too deep, we like to read. But I only get through two pages before my old mind drifts off to sleep. Lately, I've noticed some pain in my joints. It gets worse as the weather gets cold. Doc says I need to go someplace that's warm, but hell, it's just age taking hold. Now, my neighbor, he got him a place down in Scottsdale, and he leaves here for the first snow. But there ain't no way in hell I could go to the desert. I wouldn't last maybe three days or so, because I'd get to missing my chores in the winter. I get up every morning at five, and I'd worry that if I wasn't right here to feed them, there's a chance that my cows won't survive, and I'm right partial to them cows. And I'm there when they're calving, and the missus gives each one a name. When they're older, we cull them and thin out the dinks, but when they're babies, they all look the same. You know, most people seem to like springtime the best, when everything's fresh, clean, and clear. But fall seems to say, son, it's time to slow down. You've worked hard enough for one year. Of course, I do look forward to April, because there's one special place where I planted blue bonnets last year. Well, I hope they come up. They're my wife's favorite flower. That's one reason we like it out here. Hell, listen to me. I'm just rambling around. I wouldn't change things if I had the chance. The weather, hell, the weather don't matter. I ain't going nowhere. There ain't no place I'd trade for this ranch. Well, thank you so much for riding along this week, and uh, the invitation is out for you to join us right here next week at the same time. As always, many thanks to our support crew, Mark and Kathy McMillan. Remember, if you're looking for tractor parts and you make any year, best place to find them is Mark's page, bctractorparts.com. And if you enjoy this program, I know you'll love Canadian Cowboy Country Magazine. Subscribe online at cowboycountrymagazine.com. And hope you can check out our YouTube and podcast versions of the program. The links are all on our website, hugh mclennancom Till next week, I'm Hugh McLennan. Hope to see you down the trail somewhere real soon.